Hello. In this video, we're going to uh, apply Hochul's rule uh, and some other principles to help determine whether some heterocycles are aromatic. And, and I'm going to start with this example here. Uh, this is a six-membered ring. It has some pi bonds and some oxygen, two oxygen atoms in it. And I've drawn in the lone pairs because we're going to need them. Okay. So uh, it turns out that we have some rules that we need to follow to determine whether something's aromatic first. Uh, and it's important that we have a molecule that's cyclic. Uh, if it's not cyclic, it's not aromatic. Two, it needs to be, uh, it needs to appear to be conjugated. So there needs to be the appearance of something in a p orbital all the way around. And three, It needs to be planar. Non-planar molecules can't be conjugated, so, so that kind of goes hand in hand with number two. And four, we need a, a Huckel number of electrons. My program here will not let me uh, put the umlau and the u and Huckel. Huckel number of electrons, so that, that's two, two, six, ten, fourteen, eighteen, etc. And that series of Huckel numbers should maybe look familiar to you because they're also the, the same numbers that fill up the uh, S2, P6, D10, F14 subshells. And uh, it's not actually, um, it's not a coincidence that those numbers show up again. Um, but, but but how and why is, is a little bit of a, a deeper quantum mechanical question. Uh, Generally, we can recognize cyclic. This molecule is cyclic, so, so that one is good. Uh, conjugated, p orbitals all around. Well, certainly these uh, uh, four carbon atoms where I have drawn pi bonds are uh, conjugated. But what about, what about those oxygens? Do they have p orbitals? And so what we are looking for, you know, what are we looking for? What we are looking for are delocalized lone pairs. Something you probably learned about way early in your studies of organic chemistry, uh, now coming back to, uh, now coming back full swing here. So, let me some, some lone pairs. And know what I need a lone pair here and a lone pair here, and the oxygen has a positive charge, and this carbon has a negative charge. Uh, and so actually, each oxygen atom has one delocalized lone pair. Not two, right? So when we start drawing resonance structures, oops, here. When we start drawing resonance structures, we only move one around. The other one stays on that oxygen, and you will find it hard to move that around. Uh, in the next video of the series, I'm going to compare uh, pyridine and parole, which is an interesting comparison. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about how we can recognize uh, localized and delocalized lone pairs in that video. So each oxygen atom has one delocalized lone pair, and each also has one localized lone pair. Generally, if there's a, an oxygen atom, you have two lone pairs. At most, one can be localized. Right? Now, so, so if they have delocalized lone pairs... That means that there's p orbital that that lone pair is is in, and so we have p orbitals on those two oxygens. So now we meet the criterion: is it conjugated p orbitals all around? Okay. Uh, planar. Is it planar? Is it planar? Well, um, that's a good question. 
Generally, you need to know this information and you need to determine it experimentally from crystal structures or something else like this. I'm going to give you a rule of thumb. That's going to work out pretty well for you. If you have a ring size of three, four, five, six, and seven, they must be planar if conjugated. Ring sizes of eight or more are planar if aromatic. So this is an important. Uh, so if this is an important consideration, they are non-planar if not aromatic. or an on planar if they would be anti-aromatic. And we, we, we saw this uh, behavior in cyclooctatetraene that it's big enough to be flexible enough to fold out of planarity. So larger rings can do that. Uh, but smaller rings uh, must be planar if they're conjugated. So we would expect this molecule to be planar uh, if conjugated. And it's conjugated, so it's planar. Now we just need to get to rule number four, Hochul number of electrons. And so add up the number of electrons. Or we could be adding up the electron pairs. So we we're looking for an odd number of electron pairs or a four in plus two number of electrons. So looking for all pi electrons plus that are in drawn pi bonds and all um, And then, and then all delocalized lone pairs. Ooh. Okay. And so this structure, and I've kind of scrolled down away from it, and I'm going to bring it down here. Okay. We appear to have two pi bonds, which is four electrons. And we have two delocalized lone pairs, four electrons. We add all of that together, I have eight electrons total. This is not a Huckel number because this thing must be planar. If it's not a Huckel number and it meets the other criterion, we are anti-aromatic. So this compound, if it existed, would be anti-aromatic. Uh, and so if we had failed one of the other criterion, if it was not cyclic, not conjugated, not planar, we have a non-aromatic molecule. But if it's cyclic, conjugated, and planar, but with the wrong number of electrons, we have anti-aromatic. In the next video, we're going to talk about... Uh, Pyrrole and pyridine, two common nitrogen heterocycles, uh, and help you understand how to identify localized and delocalized electrons. And that will conclude then our, our video series on uh, uh, aromaticity. Thank you for watching.